Hey guys, this is Hang Mango. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I invite the beautiful Charlie Nishimura. That's it, right? Yes. To come here, she lent me her canvas to create this makeup look for you. I hope you enjoy the video. Give the channel always a lot of love. Subscribe to the channel. Give this video a thumb up, share them. And don't forget to follow both Charlie and myself on Instagram as well. Thank you. To start every makeup, I always prep the skincare first. The first product I always use is lip balm. I like to put a lot on while I'm doing makeup and then I clean whatever leftover moisturizer on the lips or lip balm on the lips and before I do lipstick. But the best way just let it sit and that way the lips get really hydrated. All the skincare today I'm going to use A from IS Clinical. It's one of my go-to skincare products. It's definitely not a sponsor, but I like them, so I do use them a lot. Look out for me. I do like to switch up skincare, but a few items here is something I always coming back. For example, the serum from them, the eye cream, and the moisturizer. For me, always very gentle around the eye area. Next is Hydrocool Serum. This is a great, beautiful, calming serum for under makeup. It's calm, it's hydrating. The best way to apply this product, it just really press into the skin. The last step for skincare prep is the repetitive moisture emotion. I always put a lot of moisturizer on, give the face some love, massage the face before I even start foundation. Some people's skin, they only need a little primer, it's ready to go. But for me, it's so important to prep the skin, the skin just really well hydrated. The makeup will last all day for you. And a lot of people even ask me a question about if you have oily skin, do I really need to use moisturizer? Yes, you do. Because a lot of time, if you don't use moisturizer, even you have oily skin, your skin will sick all the moisturizer more and it produce way more oil on the face. So using moisturizer or prep the skin well before makeup is gonna help to normalize your skin as well. For color corrector today, I'm using from NARS. For foundation and concealer, I'm using them from Tom Ford. Charlie have beautiful skin, but I always like to use a little color corrector around all the area that the color is a little bit different. We all naturally have a little shadow here around the mouth, and those are areas that I usually gonna put some color corrector. You don't have to because the foundation I'm using, they medium to full coverage, so it's covered really well. But from doing what I'm doing right now, it's gonna help not to put too much foundation and concealer on. So you see that I just put mainly around the mouth or anyone have a little bit with the color like that, you can use color corrector just to even the color out before you use foundation. You use the fingers, the brush, whatever works for you. 
for me, my channel is, I, like I say always, make up it personal, do whatever works for you, whatever I suggest, you don't have to you do it. And a lot of people ask me question, do I must use this? I say, no, you don't have to. If it works for me, I will share with you. But if it doesn't work for you that way, do whatever way that works for you. Some people hate using brushes. Some people just use the fingers. That's fine as well, you know, whatever works for you. So the color corrector will look a little dark like this, but when you put the foundation on, you everything just blend out perfectly. Also, I want to mention something about the foundation I'm using from Tom Ford here. It is the Shade and Illuminate Soft Radiant Foundation. What I noticed is this is such a beautiful foundation, but what you're gonna see right now is when I first put on the skin, it look a little light, but then again, it's oxidized and the color match perfectly. If you're gonna test the products on, always try to blend it out first before you decide. Because you know, you see that now the color look pretty blend quite seamless together on Charlie's skin. But when you first put on, you automatically gonna think the foundation gonna be too dark. So keep that in mind. You can see that it's quite seamless together. But when you first put on, it looks really light. So don't use that as a judgment. That thing is not the right shade for you. So make sure just blend it out first because you blend it out and it's oxidized. It's matched perfectly. I think maybe it has some kind of mimic ingredient in there that is blend so well. But at first we have a hard time to match with like why it looks so light, but then it's blend out is perfectly. but it is so beautiful foundation is give a lot of radiance and it does give that soft focus and very hydrating as well and the same thing i said earlier you see that all the color corrector now just even out the skin seamlessly Charlie's skin hair is really beautiful, so I'm not even bothered to put two all the way up to the hairline because I'm gonna use for the bronzer and everything later on. So there's no point to do all those parts up there. As you can see that, you know, the foundation did do oxidize a little bit and the colors look quite beautiful together. For the concealer, I'm going to use two shades. The lighter one, I'm doing mainly under the eye area. It's just my thing. I always like to have a little brighter under the eye area. And then the rest of the face, I use the color almost matching exactly the same foundation and blend it out. It's better to have the same shades of the foundation or the closest you can get to the foundation if you want to use that as a pinpoint concealer cover any imperfection or anything you like i just use the mixture between my finger and then the hand to apply concealer i also like to use a brush and just blend it out I usually use a small, like a blending brush or any kind of pinpoint brush just to pinpoint cover around the nose or any mark that I want to cover. contour i'm going to use the cream bronzer from charlotte tilbury the shade i'm using is number two 
So this is really the cream bronzer, but I'm using that as contour. So it's all personal preference. You want to use the contour product the same. I feel they all the same to me. And for Charlie, she has really beautiful bone structure. I don't think we have to do too dark or too much. I just use a little bit just to help blend it out everything. Just, you know, just scope a little bit. That's all I want to do. You can see that you can even go a little deeper if you want for the deeper shade. But I think this shade is like, it looks more effortless, seamless. It doesn't give you the harsh line because the shade is pretty close to the foundation shade. Just do on the forehead a little bit. The temple. Right underneath the cheekbone here. The jawline. I'm going to do the same on the other side. I do the same on this side as well. Just a little more, like really press the product in so you can blend it. And then I just use a little bit on the smaller side of the brush and just shape the nose a little bit. You don't have to do it. It's just like we are having fun. We are playing with different look. And if you want to know exactly where to place the contour, just slightly whistle for me and you see that right underneath here and you just blend it up. And same thing on this side. Look straight now. You see that's just very subtle. It's just my aesthetic. I don't like when it's so harsh of the line. Even I do contour, I still like everything very blended together. For powder, I'm going to use the loose powder from Rare Beauty. Look up for me. For under the eye. This is a very beautiful powder for someone who like the skin to be matte but not heavy. It does set your makeup without adding too much more deposit of the color in there. So it does do the job for you without looking too heavy. Because sometimes the powder, some powder can be uh, the particle too big. You can actually see it sit on top of the skin. And this is quite beautiful, blurry, it's gorgeous. I'm going to use the bronzer from Charlotte Tilbury as well. This one is the powder bronzer, I mean, because I use the cream bronzer and the powder bronzer, shade number two as well. I'm going to set where I use the cream bronzer earlier. I know I say in every video, you don't have to do exactly the same way I do it all. You don't need two steps like I do. It just, I find that. Sometimes you powder, take some of the color out, and uh, this is gonna help just really bring back everything that you did earlier with the cream. You see that just a little dust in back to all the area you do the cream bronzer earlier. For eyebrow, I'm going to use a brow marker from Suku and a brow gel from Refine. Charlie have beautiful full brown. I don't want to like draw in anything like that. I think it's just gorgeous for the way it is. And what I'm going to do is, is I use a brown gel first to really lift everything up. And then I use a marker to any area that I need to fill in a little more, but technically not many area. You know, I think the eyebrow just beautiful the way it is. And this way, I just really lift the eyebrow up. And you can see that. It's not really called lamination because it's just brown gel, but it's just a similar idea. I just really lift on the this side. I just really brush it up and, and the brow just in place like that first. And do the same on the other side. 
after that you can see the shape pretty clearly where you want to fill it in and then you just want to fill it in where you want you know like right here i think might be a little more so you just go a little bit in there and then maybe a little there Just a little bit here and there. You don't want to do too much because you still want the eyebrow full but soft. And you see I do a little more on the back here. Just fill it in where you think you need. You know, maybe a little here and there. Because you already gel the eyebrow really flat so you can see exactly the shape where you want to be. Where do you think need more? You just add it. And it's going to be something like that. I'm going to use little eye primer from Rare Beauty. This is a great eyeshadow primer. If you're the type of person who use eyeshadow primer before eyeshadow, if you don't, you don't have to. But for me, I feel that it's the eyeshadow go on a lot smoother, stay a lot longer. And if you're not very good at blending, eyeshadow primer does help. It's not too thick, it's pretty sheer. For eyes, I'm going to use these four products. The mascara from Huda Beauty, and I may use a liquid liner as well, I may not. A long wear eyeliner pencil from KVD. This is more like a grayish, like a slate, dark slate color. And this eyeshadow palette from Huda Beauty. But the shade I'm going to use is this shade and that shade. Those are the two I'm gonna use. Maybe a little deeper one here too, but I think mainly just those one. To start, I'm going to use the long wear liner just on the upper water line. I'm going to try to do the eye quite feline, lift it, and a little smoky out. You can see that I do a little bit on the water line. And then down this way and just lift it out a little bit like that. Look down a little bit. You can use black, brown, whatever you like. I just like the monochrome between the liner and the shadow. So that's why you just more like a dark gray color. And then you use a small blending brush just blend it out. Outward and upward. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Look at this right here. You see that? Even just like this, just a little mascara is ready to go, but I'm going to give you a different eye shadow shape for this look. You see just a little bit and I just blend it out on both sides. And I think it's just like, it's for someone who just want a little smudgy liner like this, it's ready to go. You don't have to do more than that if you don't want to. But I'm going to use some eyeshadow and I'm gonna use this shade right here. And then I'm just use some eyeshadow there. I love this shade so much. You see, I just blend it out on the crease area. And then you can use a flat brush with the lighter shades here and you just blend it out on the edge of the area
what you can do next is you a clean fluffy brush like this close your eye and just soft out the edges really blend it to the brow bone area you see that just really a little bit only and this is a great way to blend the shadow out if you don't want to define you can do a harsh line right there if you want but the look i'm trying to do is a bit more uh, you know like wearable so i'm, I'm softening the edge it out you see that just a little bit like this you just blend it up you see Charlie and then you just blend it more even more outward here next the same brush you use for the other color here and remember this is more flat brush you can use a small smudgy brush if you like but I don't want to waste another brush so you look up for me just go along the lower lash line With that color there, the, the one I use on the on the crease area. And then you can smudge it out even more if you like. You want more smoky. Just really blend it out. See what I'm doing now. Just really smudge it up. Back and forth. and how much low is up to you and then you just soften the edge of the here you see what I'm doing my very light hand is so important when you don't press the color so heavy on the skin because you're gonna have a hard time to blend you see that just really soft upward and outward look up for me and I tend to put a little more in the corner here just for a lot of depth and then go back to your clean blend brush earlier and just soften edge it out too I'm going to do the same on the other side do the same on this side and I use a clean blending brush and just blend out look up for me and you see that just really just from two eyeshadow you don't have to use too many eyeshadow and again on this outer part you can stop right there you can go all the way out you can just blend it however you like it it's all personal preference i always like to give you the option because not everyone want to have really almond eye lifted up like that and you can make it round on the edges you can stop whatever you like Always curl the lashes before the mascara. And for the mascara, there are two different sides. One is curve and lengthen, and one side volume. So I'm gonna do one coat of each. This is the curl and lengthen. And I'm gonna use the side of the volume side. Another coat. Look down for me. I love the concept of this mascara, you know, because not everyone want volume and not everyone want lengthening. So I think it's one mascara for both type of lashes. But then you can use both for your lashes as well. So the eye I think is finished. If you the type of person who love to play more, you see the little fall right here. I think it's beautiful. You can always enhance that. You can use that deep color a little bit with the same brush you used on the eyeliner earlier. And you can see that's where the fall you just really enhance it a little more it's all just having fun so it's up to you you know you see where I'm just back and forth from where I do the fall 
So it's really enhances this. And it doesn't work for every one eye, but you see for Charlie eye, you see that it's just really gorgeous. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. For blush, I'm going to use this shade of blush from Make Cosmetic. This is very ultra soft and it's kind of velvety texture. It's matte finish blush, it's really beautiful. They have a bunch of different shades and I think I want to keep the blush, it's quite soft. But like all kind of blended together. But this is a very nice texture, it gives you that kind of blurring effects as well. But it's more matte finish. See that just beautiful. I'm doing the same on this side. And you see the way I do is like I dab, dab, and I just very gently press the product in there. Don't do this wiping thing because sometimes you disturb all the application you did for the foundation, bronzer, contour, everything. This way it's gonna really set the product for you without being ruin anything else. For highlighter, I'm going to use this highlighter palette from Claydable. This is such a beautiful, I think you can use more like a blush as well. But I use a highlighter, especially this color, I think it's, it's give you that really skin-like, beautiful on olive skin, you know? Like you see like the highlight, very, very soft. It's quite gorgeous. I think it might be a limited edition, so if you like something like this, you should get them. A little bit of nose, the mouth. I like to do this thing with a fan brush because you can go very delicate with the application. I'm going to use the highlighter as well, just a little bit on the corner of the eye area, not too much. the light part for lips i'm going to use this lip cream from m cosmetic this is such a beautiful formula and i think the application is really great you know it's mimicked like the finger uh, of yours application charlie have such a gorgeous lip shape that's why i don't want to use like a lip liner because it's going to look too heavy and i love the texture is like i keep the eye quite i mean it's pretty strong so and I think the lip should be very, very soft. And this texture is a great texture for someone who want to wear lipstick, but doesn't look like you wear lipstick. So they have many different shades, but this one here is so soft and blurry effect on the lips. It's quite beautiful. And the application is gorgeous. And the color I'm using is just really soft. Such a gorgeous texture. To complete the look, I'm going to set the makeup with a setting spray from One Side Beauty. This is the final look, guys. I hope you enjoy the look. Thank you, Charlie, so much for coming to the channel. I hope you guys learn something or pick up some tips from the video. If not, you enjoy the entertainment. Thank you everyone for subscribing. If you haven't, please do. And don't forget to follow Charlie and myself on my team on Instagram as well. Thank you.